I've got the perfect person here with me to talk about what could be coming this week, who we literally called this morning because we knew how important this story was, and he agreed to join us. So, Glenn Kirshner, thank you so much. You are a 30-year federal prosecutor, now an MSNBC analyst. I just wanted to start with the news that broke overnight, because the grand jury is expected to meet this week. What does that mean for the timeline? I mean, should we all be on indictment watch now, or is that premature? We should be on indictment watch, and here's why. What I'm seeing is prosecutorial practice 101. The last witness reportedly went before the grand jury about a month ago. Now they're being recalled. They're going to be back in session this week. Let me, let me tell you what I take away from that. When we're handling large-scale investigations, big RICO conspiracy cases, what we do is we try to present all of the witnesses and all of the evidence to the grand jury the testimony, the documents we've subpoenaed, the audio tapes, the surveillance tapes mm -hmm. of perhaps people moving boxes around. Mm -hmm. Once we're done, or we think we're done, we take a step back and we basically send the grand jurors home. And what we do is we produce what's called a case impression memo, a soup to nuts written account of every shred of evidence that the grand jury heard, every charge we think might be supported by that evidence and every court precedent that informs us about whether this evidence satisfies the elements of these crimes. Once we're done all that, we make a prosecutorial decision. What charges, if any, do we ask the grand jury to vote on? Of course, Jen, in this case, there is one intervening mm -hmm. step that we usually don't have. Jack Smith has to present all of that with his recommendation to the grand jury under the special counsel regulations, to Merrick Garland, rather, not to the grand jury. He has to present his recommendation to Merrick Garland, and Merrick Garland has to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down, if you ask me to predict. Merrick Garland selected Jack Smith precisely because he had the confidence in Jack Smith to make this recommendation. Mm -hmm. So I have a feeling whatever Jack Smith recommends, Merrick Garland is going to give it the thumbs up, assuming he's recommending indictments. The next thing you do is you walk in the grand jury and you ask for a vote. So Evan Corcoran, there has also been reporting about voice memos that he took, Donald Trump's uh, former lawyer. One, is that significant? Do you typically do voice memos as a federal prosecutor? And how could that be used against Donald Trump? He probably wasn't doing voice memos when he was a federal prosecutor. Yes. When I oh, sorry. worked murder cases. Yeah, <laughs> yes. with, with, I worked murder cases with Evan Cor Corcoran yeah. back in the day. Now that he's a criminal defense attorney, yes. defense attorneys do memos to self and to file all the time. Why? Because no good deed goes unpunished. When a client gets convicted at trial, you know what one of the first things they do is they blame their lawyer. Mm -hmm. They claim their lawyer provided an effective assistance of counsel. That's why the lawyer has to be prepared to defend himself or herself with real-time contemporaneous memos that say, no, no, wait a minute. Here is what my client told me. Here is the advice I gave my client. So you know what? It's on the client. It's not on me for the legal advice I gave or failed to give. So the fact that Evan Corcoran has recorded all of this about his representation of Donald Trump, one, it is the usual practice. But two, most defense attorneys rarely think that's going to land in the hands of federal yeah. prosecutors. So they're very candid. They're very inclusive. And the fact that Jack, Smith, Jack Smith's team has this audio recording of um, Evan Corcoran's perceptions and reflections on his representation of Donald Trump, courtesy of the crime fraud exception, Boy, that's potentially devastating evidence. I wanted to ask you about something on the timeline that former FBI Director James Comey said, because he indicated that there could be a rush to try to get these indictments out, if indictments are going to be made, in order to finish the trials before the election. Do you think that timeline is possible? Yeah, the timing scares me a little bit, Jen, because the Speedy Trial Act in federal court says from the day you're indicted until the day you're supposed to go to trial, 70 days. Do we ever take a federal case to trial in 70 days? The answer is no, never, because the defense asks for continuances. There are motion schedules set. The rule of thumb is about a year from the time of indictment to the time of trial. So where does that put us? Summer of 2024, kind of on the cusp mm -hmm. of the 2024 election. What keeps me up at night is the case is still pending against Donald Trump. It hasn't gone to trial. Donald Trump wins the White House, and now, what, he orders his own prosecution dismissed? 
or courtesy of the Office of Legal Counsel memo, we now can't prosecute a sitting criminal president? That's the stuff of nightmares and fiction novels. Glenn Kirshner, a lot to keep watching. A tricky timeline, as you said. Thank you so much for agreeing to come join us this afternoon on such short notice. We really appreciate My it. My pleasure.